The word trust. Okay, here's the multiple choice. Trust. Does it mean A, a thing that you trust will work for you? B, a thing that you trust somebody else will manage properly for you? Or C, a thing that you trust will be an absolute pain? My answer, I think it's probably going to be an absolute pain because I don't understand it. But let's try and find out about them. Sean Latter, Wealth Manager at Questa, and Cheryl Howard, the MD of Cheryl Howard and Associates. Uh, a closer look at trusts and benefits of them. Welcome, guys. Nice to have you with us. Thank you. Um, Sean, let's start with you. Why would I start a trust? Why would I be interested in a trust? I think, Jeremy, and there's, there's certain estate planning benefits that one looks at when, when they have a trust. And I think some of the big things to look at, if we're going to set up a trust, which would be an inter vivos trust, in other words, while you're still living, okay, because there's separate types of trust. So that would be the first one. While I'm living, I would set up an inter vivos trust. Why would I do that? Mm -hmm. There's a couple of things. The first one is that I can then freeze my estate from an estate duty and capital gains tax point of view. The second one is I can get some protection of those assets, especially if I'm in business and I have liability risks attached to it. So I can actually put those assets elsewhere so that they're no longer mine. I think the third one is really if you have a situation where you want to have multiple beneficiaries of one asset, and a prime example of this is a farm, it's very difficult to subdivide a farm amongst your beneficiaries, then it might make sense to put it on there so you have efficient succession to those, those beneficiaries. So I think those are perhaps the three big areas one would look at when considering uh, whether to have a trust or not. Okay, now there's a lot of nodding going on here. Yes. Yeah. So you're obviously agreeing with everything. Completely. I you, think from a you are more, though, you, you look at it from a, a more fiduciary point of view. Correct. In that one of your opening comments was, is my trust going to be a pain? And unfortunately, it needs to be in the form of, if you're going to run a trust properly, there are certain things one has to do. For instance, opening of bank accounts, preparation of financial statements, and probably the most important, trustees minutes and resolutions. In that you see, now this is already, I'm going, no, this is a pain. No, Not interest. <laughs> it's certainly got its benefits as far as what Sean's put out on the, on the form of limited liability. And nowadays, um, any um, sole proprietor or owner-managed business literally should have their assets within a trust. And if it's managed no differently to one would do a company um, in the form of your directors and managing from a directorship point of view, so you would do with the trustees. Um, and it is. If you, if you go to the right um, accountants or professionals in literally having it managed, it is seamless, not a problem. Loss of control is not a problem as far as um, managing your trust is concerned. Um, and it's, it's certainly not a pain from, from that side. So, well, hang on. Now, in, in my position, let's, let's use me as a really bad example, okay? I'm, I'm freelance. I work for various companies and I do work on various issues with them. Mm. Should I be looking at having a trust and putting things like my home and that sort of thing into a trust? I think the question would come down to is what is the liability that you might hold in those consulting positions? If you're in a situation where many business owners might be signing a huge amount of personal surety and taking on a, a huge amount of liability that could literally destroy their wealth, then I'd say absolutely. If one's in a situation where you say, well, I'm consulting, I'm getting a fee, and there's no real repercussions of that, then I'd okay. say, well, potentially not. So if you, so um, am I getting this right? Because this is baby steps for me, okay? Hold my hand, mommy, okay, <laughs> baby steps. If I am exposing myself to any risk and I want to protect myself from that and I'm a, I'm a, I run my own company, say I run a tyre dealership and I've got to put in a million rands worth of tyres just to keep the thing ticking over on a monthly basis, right. I should be looking at maybe putting some of my stuff into trust to protect it from a tyre manufacturer, if the business starts going pear-shaped, can you say a tyre company goes pear-shaped? I don't know. But, um, <laughs> for, from them coming after me and attaching my house. Correct. And you know what I advocate then, um, Jeremy, is that you actually create two trusts. One is a wealth preservation trust. So that would be your share portfolio, your family home, your um, holiday home, assets that you don't want to lose as such and essentially um, make sure that um, from a limited liability and from a security point of view, you're not using those assets as far as the business is concerned. And then you create a separate business trust and you would then have 
the tire manufacturer or the consulting business or engineers, for instance, you have a number of consulting engineers or architects, they would then put their business within, um, their consulting business within a trust and um, that income then is, um, and, and those assets are then ring fenced within a business trust as such. You'd have the two trusts talking to each other in the form of each of them being beneficiaries of each other. Um, for instance, if you then um, create dividends or income, it could then be moved to the other trust, free of it ever touching you in your in your personal capacity, because as beneficiaries, you would have a distribution from one trust to the other, and you as the, the founder and the planner have literally freed yourself of a considerable amount of, of assets and wealth. So in other words, a, a group of uh, professional individuals who may be exposing themselves to risk could create a trust together they could do. Um, companies might be a better structure in that form um, with the um, individual's trust holding the company's interest, but it depends. You can certainly have a, a trading and business trust, but then the critical thing is it mustn't be seen. Um, trusts are normally created specifically for um, a set of beneficiaries. So if one's setting up a business trust, you can't then have um, your beneficiaries and your trustees all in the same persons because from a look-through point of view, it, um, it's seen as a, as a, sham, uh, you know, a sham trust from that side. So from a business trust, if you're setting them up as a group of engineers literally going into a business as such, you would then want to make sure that you do bring in um, independence in the form of um, um, additional trustees, professionally managed you know, independent trustees. You see, now you're losing me again. Should they rather form a company? Um, depending on the circumstances, I must be honest, I would do a company right. on that one, okay. yes. So I read that one wrong. Yes. Then why didn't you just slap me then? <laughs> hey? It's much easier. You just said, don't be well. stupid, man. <laughs> why would you want to do that? <laughs> yeah, not from a consulting. <laughs> but you would want to, I mean, from a business trust point of view, you would. Um, there's certainly an, a number, I mean, if you're as a, as a sole proprietor or as an owner-managed business, I mean, for instance, people in an advertising agency, great business to literally um, have two or three uh, people in the advertising, but you have those businesses held within a company, but each um, director or each shareholder rather has got their interest held within a business trust. And then you can literally have a, a number of businesses um, or a number of types of businesses. You can have the advertising agency, you can have the printing business or whatever the case is in within the business trust. If you're um, printing business has to finance um, working capital then for your business trust. It's all literally housed within that entity as such. It doesn't affect your family home. It doesn't. You're not putting your share portfolio on the line. You're not putting your know, all and sundry on that side. You are separating your business and your wealth, uh, wealth assets and, and creating a, a very good protection mechanism as far as that's concerned. Sean, you, you said this is now the what? what in Inter vivos, so your living trust. Inter vivos. In life. <laughs> you oaks. <laughs> You're a different breed, you know that. Inter vivos. Okay, now you said that's one type. Yes. Yeah. What are the others? Well, I think the opposite of that was a trust that is set up upon your death or by testament, which would be through your will. And that's okay, an inter testamentos. So that would be, a, in, yeah, it would be a testamentary trust or a will trust. Okay. 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 Now, I think the, the nature of that is very, very different because now what we're doing is setting something like that up for, for very different reasons. And I think if anybody is out there and they've got minor children, as an example, mm -hmm. if their will doesn't have a testamentary trust, then there's a problem. Okay? And I think that the, the key element there is if, take, for example, my, my, my wife and I, if we had a will that said, you know, either of us will, will get benefit of each other's estates if either of us pass away, that's fine. If both of us pass away, we've only got our dependents left and they're minor children that money will then go to the guardian's fund and then they'll manage it for those children. As opposed to saying, well, let's set up a testamentary trust and then we can actually have some guidance in terms of saying how that money is to be invested, how the income is going to be uh, uh, sort of paid over to the beneficiaries and ultimately the capital will, will pass to those beneficiaries when we uh, have all, when, when we set up the will, we can decide those types of, of things. So in other words, if, if the two of you passed away at the same time in a motor car accident. Yeah. Um, if you didn't have a testamentary trust, all of the money that you have acquired between yourself and your wife, which being a, a wealth manager would be huge, massive, 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 <laughs> massive. Okay, would then go to the nominated guardian. 
of mm. your children who really, if you didn't have a testament, te what? testamentary, testamentary trust, trust yeah. that would be up to the guardian to choose what to do with the money and, and how it's yeah. spent and... Well, basically, it works in that the Guardian's fund is actually a government fund. Oh, okay. Oh, so no, cool. And, and we're not cool. just talking oh. about the oh. money, we're talking about the entire estate. So that would oh, no. involve okay. any no, business that's, no, interests, no. whatever. Okay, right. I thought you meant the Guardian of the no. children. And I was no. thinking to myself, but surely that person you would make sure is somebody who would act in the children's best interest, but now you're going to give it to the government. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, if you've got minor children, <laughs> the first thing you do tomorrow morning is phone your financial advisor and you get them to set up a testamentary trust, okay? Please take my advice. I don't know everything, but that's one thing I would not, not ever allow to happen, is that and money go to government because then yeah. you don't know what's going to happen. Correct. And the other big thing, I mean, when you say you appoint somebody to literally be the guardian of your children in that you want them to have a look, up, you know, look after the kids and their best interests and follow family values, etc. The biggest hassle, uh, and I've seen from a trust and estate planning in the 20 odd years that I've been in it, is that somebody then receives a 5, 10 million rand payout um, that they've now got to look after somebody. And the pressure and the responsibility, let alone having just now inherited you know, three kids, mum, pop and the dog and everything else on that, you've literally got the financial discipline of making sure that this money has got to be looked after um, to make sure that the kids can go to, through to varsity. I always ad advocate that you bring in at least two, if not three, trustees into a testamentary trust. So you take the pressure off the person who's going to be looking after the children, put in a financial, independent financial person, and then often the, the conflict becomes, well, if you know, my brother's looking after the kids, what about your sister then? Must she come into the party? Yes, put in a member from both sides of the family so that you can make sure that you know, both family values are taken through and both family are then still, both parts of the family are still involved with bringing up the child and looking after the, um, the child's financial interest as well. Jeepers, I thought we were going to have a, a lively, wonderful conversation and we started talking no, we started about death and all the rest <laughs> of it. Sean Latter, Wealth Manager at Cuesta and Cheryl Howard, the MD of Cheryl Howard and Associates. We're talking trusts this evening and we trust you will be back with us in just a moment.